of um, education's um, measures that I've talked about that has been sent to all the boarding schools and one of them just requiring a locking of dormitories at night, having school principals reside in school, but what is the real cause of these schools and rest? Appearance to be blamed. So Mr. Mayo, thank you so much for joining us here on KTN News Center. I'm pretty much sure you've uh, gone through the measures that the Ministry of Education has put in place as a way of trying to bring sanity within the learning you know, environment, especially boarding schools. I'd just like to pick your mind on your take on these several measures that have been put in place. Yeah, thank you so much for having me in the studio. On behalf of the parents of this country, we 100% agree with the measures that have been put in place by the Ministry of Education. These measures will go a, a long way in assisting our children, especially uh, where we have been having some school unrest. Having said that, we would also like to add some few which actually were left out. Um, we feel that testing of uh, drugs, su uh, substance in the blood of, uh, of our children should also be in, in the list because uh, this school unrest happens because our children are under the influence of drugs. So if we test them, a school of 800 children can have maybe 10 of them with, with, uh, who are positive for the drug. They can be isolated and treated because if they are left out, the 10 will spoil the 800. Number two, I would also add that uh, it's also good for the Ministry of Education to be inspecting our children, especially the boarding, the day boarding schools. We have, we have schools in Kenya which have uh, who are day scholars and boarders at the same time. The day scholars will bring uh, drugs to school and give to the, to, to the, to the boarders. So we feel that uh, one of the measures that should be added is inspecting these day scholars when entering school so that uh, they are thoroughly searched and these drugs cannot enter the schools. All right. Otherwise, I... um, we've gone through the list and uh, it's 100%. All right. Yes, you're saying it's 100%. We are in agreement. But Mr. Mayo, if I look at some of the things, the measures that the Ministry of Education has put in place, these are just measures that have always been, have always been there in boarding schools, you know, having school principals residing within the school compound, having uh, guidance and counselling sessions, and also just uh, trying to ensure that dormitories are locked at night. These are things that have been there before. Is it that they've been there and the school principals have not really been keen on implementing these measures? Exactly. I would say I, we visited a school in uh, Samburu called uh, Waso. I was the, a director, Mr. Duale. We went to him to the, to, the, to the boarding section and we saw they were open. But in the guideline, they are supposed to be locked. And those domes were open. Number two, you will also realize that uh, teachers and principals have been told to recite in the school compound. That directive has been there, but they have not been doing it. So we need uh, these things to be done, not just put in paper. Because uh, our children, especially in the dome, they sleep alone. We found out, I went to a school um, last week, and I saw that especially the boys, the boys are on their own completely. So now that these measures have been pronounced once again, if our principals will reside in schools, if uh, the dorm masters will sleep with our boys in the dormitories, if our young men were, uh, are inspected while um, the day scholars while entering the school compound, I think, uh, and uh, if our boys are tested, the few of our boys in a school of 800, maybe you could have 15 of them under, under influence of drugs. If these boys are tested and isolated, the rest will be safe. All right. We should not that, have uh, school unrest. What, that, what, one of the things I think will be very effective, uh -huh. which was not there, is, is effective communication. In, and, uh, in Bungoma County, for example, out of 17 
schools that, are, that got school unrest. 14 of them, we found out from our people in the ground that uh, the boys were never heard. All right. They were complaining and teachers never gave them uh, audience. But then, Mr. Mayo, when, when I look at one of the measures that the government through the you know, Ministry of Education has put in place and which might cause a bit of some tension in school and, and students feeling like they are sort of quote-unquote in a military sort of learning environment, is the measure that the government says that teachers on duty should actually watch the movements of all students, including when going to the laboratories, and it goes ahead and says that the male teachers need to keep a distance, especially male teachers who are working in the, you know, institutions of learning that only has girls, like the girls' secondary schools. Don't you think this will make students to feel um, uh, tensed and feel like, quote-unquote, what I've said, feel like they're learning in a militarized environment? Um, through our experience, we found out that uh, if our children are listened or they're involved in anything that is done in school, there will be some good, some positive changes. Especially if you look at uh, what our boys and girls were, were, were asking for. They said um, instead of having entertainment during the day, they were used to having it during the night. Mm -hmm. And if this change was made without their involvement, they would, res they would, res res they would automatically resist. And that's what happened. They resisted the changes uh, of, of the institutions by saying that uh, entertainment should be done, should be put forward to two instead of seven in the evening. And this is what caused uh, some school unrest. So effective communication, if our children are given, are listened to mm -hmm. and given some hearing, and they are totally involved in any changes in school, I don't think there will be any problem. Right. Because that, that, uh, the, the, main, the biggest problem is, is when they are handled or the, the, the changes are made without them being involved. So are you, are you, are you as, a, as, as the chair of the Parents Association, National Parents Association, um, are you indirectly telling us that students, who are learners who are involved in this, coming up with these measures? Mm, I don't think so because uh, this is, these were measures uh, they were supposed to be taken because the school and risk was escalating every now and then. Mm -hmm. And if something was not done, that has been done now by the Minister of Education, uh -huh. in fact, I should con 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 congratulate the Minister of Education for, for, for being timely. Otherwise, uh, it's us parents who will, who will bear the burden. All right. Because after our children ban schools, we are supposed to you know, build up again those, those dormitories. All right. And do, do you think that parents are to be blamed for this uh, indiscipline that's, that's being witnessed, uh, you know, in schools right now? Because they were away for 10 months. And this is something that the CS for Education, you know, Professor Mago had talked about. Uh, not entirely, because uh, personally, and uh, us as a board of National Parents Association, we, we, we did some survey and we found out that uh, when children go home for longer periods, example is during the long holidays of December, when they open schools in January, the first cuts, they'll not do well. The second cut, they'll do very well. So if children are left um, without going to school for a long period, like what we did during the pandemic, they were exposed to so many things. Exposed to total freedom, exposed to child labor, exposed to uh, teenage pregnancies, exposed to an ex explicit content through the, through the TVs, through the phones, all these things. Mm -hmm. So it, actually, it needed actually our teachers to prepare them, to bring their minds back to school because the, their minds were totally disoriented. In, in fact, most of the boys I interviewed when we went to, to school are saying we, were, we, were, we used to get 500 shillings per day when you had some, some hustle. 
But now we are in school, and uh, the parents gave us a thousand shillings for the whole time as, as pocket money. All right. So imagine somebody who, who is used to 500 shillings every day mm -hmm. and is given a thousand shillings for, for three months. All right. But, but, but then yeah. uh, let's so talk about... So I think TSC should have done something. All right. I'd like to pick your mind on that proposal by the teachers' union, like, you know, the Kenya National Union of Teachers proposing to the government that uh, for sanity to be, brought up, to be brought back to a learning institutions, they need to abolish boarding schools. As far as we don't agree, because uh, I, I sent a message to them, and they were saying that uh, most of them are working class, you know, in, is working in Kisumu, working in Nairobi, working in Mombasa, their children in boarding school because uh, they cannot afford to stay with them. But I know um, with the emergence of the CBC, that will be the way to go. So I, I think we will prepare them as time comes, and uh, eventually we'll have day schooling in Kenya, like it is done in every, in in in, in uh, outside countries, developed countries. Most of the children are day scholars. Mm -hmm. So I think for, us, for for now, parents will have to be given time to prepare, because you cannot you cannot just do it just now. Yeah, because the reasons they gave is. Um, they don't trust the house up if, they, if you leave your children with them. You know, they feel they are safer in, in boarding school. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but otherwise, I think going, going by the CPC spirit, we will, we will have to go uh, the day schooling way. All right. And, and do you agree with uh, one of the measures that the Ministry of Education has put in place, and that is... Um, uh, you know, children who've been involved in school and rest, you know, or the absence, the record will be put down and uh, this will actually affect the future careers because this means if the record is put down and uh, good conduct is required by a potential employer, you will get a report of this is not a good person to employ, hence affecting the future career. Do you uh, support that decision by the Ministry of Education? Um, our children actually don't understand it because we interviewed some, some boys and they were telling us um, a certificate of good conduct. I just asked my dad to go and pick it for me. So, so from, from the point of view and uh, from um, our way of uh, finding facts on, on this, our children need a lot of sensitization. They don't really understand that uh, DCI has brought some, some, some new facts that uh, if you are prosecuted, your future will be affected because a uh, good food certificate of conduct will not be given to you. They don't really understand. All right. Because I interviewed about eight boys. Only one of them said, we fear that it might affect. But seven of them were saying, you know, we have, in Kenya, in Kenya, you know, it depends on who you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So now the Ministry of Education has put down the rules and regulations on how schools will operate as a way of bringing sanity. Yes, we expect the Board of Management, um, together with the school principals of various schools, to have a sit down by the 15th of this month to discuss on those measures, what they're going to do, and hence pass forth this to the um, county district education officers. But don't you think or do you think there is need for the schools to have a sit down with learners in boarding schools and explain to them these measures and the effect it will have on them and also get the minds, rather the feedback of learners when it comes to these measures? Exactly. I'm in agreement with you. Because I said before, if our children are given information prior to something being done, I think uh, there will be no commotion in schools. But if, we, if our teachers will do it without their knowledge, like changing uh, entertainment time, changing uh, preps time, changing their free games time or something like that, without uh, good sensitization, there will, be some, there will be some resistance. So for this, I think uh, it's also good for our children to be involved, to be given full information on the effects 
of uh, the bad, I mean, the effects of the good school uh, conduct certificate, and the measures that have been brought by the Ministry of Education. Mm -hmm. I'm in agreement with that. All right, and as we bring this conversation to an end, yes. Mr. Mayo, years back, I think in 2014, when uh, uh, Dr. Fred Matiangi, the current CS for Interior, was uh, the Cabinet Secretary for Education, and the cases of school arson that were being reported during that examination period, one of the measures that he talked about and put forth um, uh, and gave to the instructions given to the principals of high schools is that you should not admit and a student who's being transferred from one school to another and has a case of in discipline or has been involved in an arson, don't you think that should have been the way to go this year instead of bringing now all these measures that have been put in place? Because some of these measures actually still exist. Not unless the government or the Ministry of Education opens um, schools that can correct the character of our children. If we don't have those kind of schools like other countries, uh, you know, it will be against the, the, the rights of a child to deny education because you know, under the Basic Education Act, under the 2010 Constitution, you know, education is comp free and compulsory. And uh, the children's rights, they have every right under our basic education and uh, the Constitution 2010 to have that right of uh, learning. So um, I think the best way is to open the, this recreational schools that can correct the characters of these children instead of um, admitting them in the same schools, transferring them from school A to school B. Because I remember I was told by uh, somebody in Itigo Girls that the girl who was suspected was actually a girl who has been transferred from another school to a burnt uh, school dormitory. All right. Mr. Nicholas Mayo, the National Parents Association yes. Chairperson, yes. I'd like to say thank you so much for talking to us here on KTN News Centre about the measures that the government has put in place. we we'll wait and see on how this will be implemented by various school heads in all the boarding schools. So now, a short commercial break. I'll be right back with uh, what is making the headlines here on KT News.